hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the University Centre. How's that going? Uh, my name is Jamie Morgan. I'm the Community Health Manager here at Health. So the University Centre opened in January 2020 in partnership with the University of Worcester. And we put on three lectures every month around different topics. And we hope the lectures will inspire you to consider higher education. Our lecture today is by Dr. Heather Barrett on sustainable development and education. And we'll hand over to Heather shortly. Um, but first, just a few housekeeping uh, things to keep in mind. So hopefully, as you join, you'll notice your cameras and microphones are switched off. Um, this is so that we don't have any background noise that could be recorded. If you do have any questions, Heather, we encourage you to use the chat box and we will do a QA um, at the end of the session. Right of your screen, you should see a purple tab with arrows, and once you click on this, you should see a chat window. And we will obviously monitor the chat throughout the lecture. So, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Heather. Thank you very much, Jamie. I'll just uh, share some slides with people. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me along to uh, come and talk to you this afternoon as part of your public lecture um, series. Um, I say my name, as Jamie said, is Heather Barrett, uh, and I'm a principal lecturer in human geography at the University of Worcester. Uh, and I also have a role across the university uh, as the academic lead for sustainability. Um, so again, that's for me looking to promote um, sustainable education uh, across the across the university. Um, so what I want to talk to you uh, about today is again the role for education in what is for many, I say, a time of uh, great significance and some would say climate crisis. Um, so I think my brief is to to talk to you for about um, 40 minutes or so. Um, and then offer some time for, for questions uh, at the end. So just a little outline of um, what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to um, provide a little bit of context in terms of where we are in terms of climate crisis and look at the role for uh, education uh, within this. Um, and then want to talk a little bit about uh, what is uh, education for sustainability and again you may, I'm sure you've all heard of the term sustainability, but perhaps often we're not quite sure exactly what that might mean, and certainly maybe not in the context of, of education specifically. Then I want to um, just take you through a few examples of the ways in which we look to embed um, education for sustainability uh, within the university and some of the things that I've been been looking on, uh, looking looking to uh, lead on um, and also to look about some of the ways in which kind of individuals can can get involved in, in making making the change as well and then there'll be some time for questions uh, at the end so climate crisis and the role of education well, I'm sure you're you're very aware that um, I say this is very much uh, in the news at the moment. Um, and I say and has been for quite a while now. And I think there's a lot of kind of anxiety out there, certainly uh, amongst uh, amongst young people in terms of uh, the state of the world at the moment. And you may, I'm sure, have heard of um, on the left there. Uh, Greta, Greta Thunberg, uh, who's been uh, quite vocal, kind of a voice for young people uh, in terms of um, the the need to act and the the emergency of the the situation and the the feelings of kind of uh, fear that I say many young people have about the, the situation that we're currently in. So again, her famous um, phrase is that act as if your house is on fire because it is. Um, there is that anxiety, um, yet also young people are very proactive in trying to, uh, say, lead, the, they sort of have a desire for change 
and to a kind of lead on that as well and to transform um, how we think about the planet, how we live our lives and generate solutions to this crisis. So again, on the right there, um, the idea of, let's say, the, the global climate strikes, um, again, and the idea of, let's say, the need to act now, so drawing on the Martin Luther King phrase, the fierce urgency of now. So now is very much uh, the time to, to act. And as I say, young people, I mean, people within education are very much uh, at the heart of, of these discussions. So certainly um, it's, it's argued that as I say, universities and colleges, um, education generally has an Im important role to play in addressing the, uh, the situation that we are, we are in. Uh, and I'm thinking about ways, um, let's say, out of uh, the climate crisis. Uh, so this is a couple of quotes, I say, from the um, Professor of Environmental uh, Science, Science Studies, David Orr, um, who's kind of very, been very well known um, activist, um, writer, researcher in issues around education and sustainability for a number of years now. And he suggests that, as I say, no institutions uh, in modern society are better, better equipped to uh, catalyze this transition to a sustainable world than colleges and universities, uh, because they, as they access to the leaders of tomorrow, the, the people being educated will be the leaders of tomorrow, uh, and also they can uh, influence the leaders of today, and what they do matters in the, in the context. However, David Orr has also um, said, um, again, part of his writings, um, that I say the, the current crisis that we're now in is not the um, result of uh, ignorant people. Um, rather often, um, these problems have been perpetuated uh, by people with um, BAs, BSCs, PhDs, etc. Uh, and sometimes when it's argued another cohort graduates, the, the earth gives a collective groan of these people. So it's again, I say, it's not automatic that, that universities and colleges will, I say, be producing the people who will be able to, to address, address these issues. But uh, there is a role certainly for them to play. And again, using a quote from David Orr, um, again, this kind of points at the, um, the points that, yes, universities and colleges have a role. Um, education is very important, uh, but not necessarily any kind of education. Perhaps some of the things that have been uh, taught in the past have not been or not necessarily um, right or appropriate in terms of a transition to a, a sustainable future. Um, so he argues at the end there in the sentence, it's not education, but education of a certain kind that will, will save us. So it's the idea of transformation. And he talks a lot about the idea of um, making sure that we have graduates um, from education who are ecologically literate uh, or have certain wisdom around some of these these issues. So he's been a great proponent of the idea of ecological uh, literacy. So there's the idea of, I say, transforming education uh, as being uh, as being important. Uh, the need for, as I say, a need for change. Uh, and again, young people, and I say um, people within education are certainly very much want to see this and want to see um, change and want to see sustainability and discussion about sustainability uh, as part of their educational offer. Uh, each year, the, the organisation, um, so this is Students Organising for Sustainability UK, which is charitable arm of the, the National Union of Students, um, who uh, survey students every year in terms of their uh, sort of attitudes towards sustainability and what they want to see. Uh, and again, their, their surveys uh, year on year, so they, they survey students across the country in schools and colleges, thousands of students. Uh, increasingly, they want to see sustainability as part of what they, what they, they uh, experience and learn within, within further and higher education. So often, I say, how the university um, t 
takes, as I say, these issues seriously, environmental and global issues, uh, is an important factor influencing their choice of where to study. Um, certainly, they, again, increasing numbers want to kind of know something more about sustainable development. Um, again, they want to see their universities and colleges, um, I say, actively uh, promoting sustainable development. Uh, again, this is increasing and um, again, want to make sure that this is so very much part of their, their course offers. They want to learn more about it and what they study. And this also impacts upon the kinds of um, careers and the organisations they want to go into work in. So there is certainly very much a desire amongst students uh, for, uh, say, more, more engagement with sustainability uh, within and say further and higher education. So the interesting question is, well, what does this actually mean uh, in practice? I suppose the, the sort of stereotypical idea when sort of people talk about sustainability um, is that, well, it's, it's all about recycling, isn't it? Um, that's right, so it's, that's what we're, we're talking about here. Well, yes, I mean, that is very much, it's very important um, in terms of one fact, but it's not um, the only the only thing. So I think, again, perhaps people have a very uh, specific view of what, what sustainability and education um, actually mean uh, in practice. Um, I say these things are important and I will return to the idea of things like the, the Recycle League here on the campus at the University of Worcester. Um, a little bit later on in terms of actions, but uh, just to suffice to say there's a little bit more to it than just about, um, let's say, putting the right rubbish uh, in the right, the right bin. So there's quite a, a wide range of things to look at. And again, I think it's what I would like to really sort of talk to you about uh, today is to say that the, the breadth of uh, issues and areas that come under this uh, say umbrella of, of sustainability and the range of issues and things to think about I say in dressing this idea of uh, sustainable future and where where education fits into this. So you might have heard about this um, idea from I say Kate Rayworth, another well-known commentator, talks about this idea of donut economics. Uh, again, this idea about thinking about different uh, economic models for thinking about, about the world, so this need for transformation. So here we see the world kind of as a donut, and it's the idea that we need to live between these kind of, uh, say, boundaries, um, uh, which are important. So the, there is this ecological ceiling, and we don't want to, I uh, say, exceed the capacity um, of the of the earth um, and say the earth systems and as you can see on the model here many areas where it's argued that the society is exceeding this ecological ceiling and that we are living unsustainably and I'll see at the top there this is the, the kind of issue of the climate crisis and climate change but equally there are other issues such as I say biodiversity loss um, the loss of land to urban development uh, which is very much my my interests as a as a, an urban geographer by background, but also again the kind of health health of the kind of the soil etc. So there are these lots of these limits and these ceilings that are being breached, and we need to kind of address those concerns. But equally, there are lots of um, shortfalls in relation to the kind of foundation for kind of life on the planet and humans. So we have a new overshoot in some respect, again, in terms of impacts on the planet, but we also have shortfalls in terms of kind of society and life. So again, in areas such as health, access to food, water, um, energy, etc. So it's about this kind of broader complexity. And again, this is why there are so many different opportunities um, to engage with so many issues. See, this is part of a a much broader and interconnected um, issue that I say education um, needs to needs to address and needs to deal with and again the idea that we need to transform our ways of doing things and thinking about things to uh, address these address these issues so 
So this is very much, I say, the the role. So this idea is to get within these these kind of boundaries or limits and ceilings. Uh, we need to say think about okay, transformation, transforming how we live our lives uh, in order to have a sustainable future. So at present, we are in a state that is uh, unsustainable. Um, we need to, we want to, or the vision is to move to a state where we are sustainable. Uh, so going from left to right on this diagram. Um, and again, to achieve that, this transition, um, I say the, the uh, diagram there talking about the, the idea that we need education for sustainability. So we need to the right conditions, we need the right ways of teaching, uh, develop the right skills and knowledge uh, to enable enable this transition. So going back to Orr's quote, it's a particular kind of education that will, will help us uh, with this with this transformation to address the challenges uh, that we face in the contemporary the contemporary world so then that takes us on to well what do we mean by uh, education for sustainability so again we may have some ideas you may know a lot already about what this what this means in practice um, but I just wanted to go through some sort of foundational um, ideas and again some of the recent uh, work that's been done in this this area so again perhaps again as I say it's argued certainly that sustainability what is sustainability was a a, a Google search that, that increased during the recent pandemic that people were interested in this but interestingly, also, uh, what is sustainability was also a Google search that uh, increased as well. Um, so people are interested. I say it's a word that's been around for a long time. Um, but again, perhaps I say people don't necessarily know exactly what it kind of means means in practice. But there is a very kind of um, well, well, sustainability is. A, Broadly, a very can be a quite undefined term. And sustainable development can be quite undefined and contested. Um, there are some sort of broad sort of definitions that are used again quite yeah, universally. So this one comes from, like I say, one of the first kind of uh, big global discussions around sustainable development. Uh, what was known as the Brundtland Commission uh, on our common future. And again, this is one you will often see um, utilised in relation to defining what is meant by sustainable development. So development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And that's a kind of, I say there are lots of debates and discussions that can be, be had around that. And if you want to take these discussions further in courses you do, um, in education, then you'll you'll know that I say there's st still a lot of debates around these these ideas, but that's a a good working working term. And also, again, you, you may or may not be familiar, familiar with are these sort of what are seen as the three pillars um, of sustainability and sustainable development: the idea of the economic, the environmental, and the social. And not necessarily in that order, and that equally is. A matter of debate uh, but the the diagrams on the right there show you how these things are linked together so at the top the idea that these three pillars are very much uh, all important to consider so sustainability is not just about the environment the environment is important uh, in terms of okay in social life and social worlds equally it's important in terms of linking to uh, economic matters so Again, the environment needs to be balanced so that we, things are bearable, so we're not overheating or getting flooded or whatever that might be as a result of global warming. Uh, equally, things need to be equitably distributed. So there is this social economic element as well in terms of equity, both uh, across uh, places uh, and people, but also generations, which goes back to Brundtland. And the idea that you know, again things need to be sustainable and viable over the longer term, but not impacting negatively on the environment. So all these things being linked together, 
the diagram at the bottom there again suggests that these things are, are mutually supportive and again the environment is important to support society which is important to support the economy so the idea that these things are connected and they are also uh, embedded as well so those are some of the core ideas about sustainability and sustainable development uh, more recently, um, there's been, I say, a lot of discussion uh, about the uh, what are called the global goals. Um, so, I say, back um, back in the 1990s, we had the Millennium Goals in terms of goals for a, a better future. More recently, in 2015, the United Nations adopted. Uh, these 17 um, sustainable development goals, as they were often known also as the as the global goals. Uh, and I think they've gained a lot of kind of interest and currency and traction because they, they can be presented in this lovely kind of graphic, um, as they, which kind of hits home some of the key areas, I say, that the, the world needs to address in terms of uh, a sustainable development, sustainable future. Um, so there are these 17 high level goals and within that there are a range of, of actions um, to be taken. So this is, as I say, adopted in 2015 uh, and as I say 2030 is the, uh, is the sort of target date. And we're now within the sort of the decade uh, for the goals, 2020 to 2030. So again, lots of discussions um, happening around progress towards these goals where we are sort of annual discussions and reporting at the at the um, at the global level so as you can see again given this this idea of complexity the range of things the range of different areas the social the economic and the environmental these are things being linked and I say embedded together these are reflected in the in the range of the of the global the global goals as you can see they cover aspects of kind of social improvement education equality uh, resources uh, the environment the economy etc but also things like I say partnership uh, and justice as well different way of uh, expressing these again this idea of things being kind of embedded and nested together and mutually supportive and this is the kind of what's known as the kind of wedding cake uh, model um, I say a way of expressing the um, sustainable development goals which is kind of quite a nice way of seeing how these things link together again the biosphere at the bottom um, I say supporting, linking to society and the, the social improvements around, I say, hunger, poverty, health, education, etc. And again, how that supports then a uh, sustainable economy in terms of, uh, I say, decent worth, infrastructure, etc. And then the thread running through that, again, which is very impar important, this idea of um, partnership. Um, and again, the idea about how people work together to achieve these uh, aims is, is an important tenet of these ideas of the sustainable development goals. And many measures uh, put partnership um, at the heart of one of the key key elements to be to be looked at. And that's sustainability and sustainable development. So, how does education? begin to to fit into uh, all of this well as you saw there one of the sustainable development goals is about quality education so it is one of the one of the key goals to be achieved um, but it's also recognized as a, a key mechanism for achieving all of the other sustainable development goals um, so it's important as well to say that everybody is kind of as I say embedding these ideas about sustainability within within education um, so one of the targets that underpins the sustainable development goals um, is target 4.7 which I say is particularly relevant to educational uh, establishment institutions across the sector um, so the the target is that by 2030 all learners will have the knowledge and skills uh, needed to promote sustainable development um, 
through education, uh, lifestyle, rights, equality, peace, <laughs> Uh, non-violence, global citizenship, appreciation of cultural diversity and culture's contribution to sustainable development. So this is a real rallying call for education to make sure that it is uh, equipping um, students and learners um, to ha have this knowledge and, and these skills to uh, address sustainable development and the, and the range of the global goals. So this is, I say, the importance of education for sustainable development is recognised by UNESCO. Um, and I say they've just had a, a big conference delayed because of the um, COVID um, restrictions pandemic, uh, where they launched their, um, their sort of framework for, I say, education for sustainable development. So ESD 2030. Um, so they develop this idea of a framework of sort of working towards, I say, education for sustainable development to support the goals. So it's very much uh, a topic that's under discussion uh, globally, and then also how that filters down to the, as I say, the the UK context as well. So in terms of the um, UNESCO definition. Um, so there have been definitions of education for sustainable development previously, um, but let's say this recent framework um, has come out with uh, a new one, which I'm sure will become the um, the sort of key go-to definition uh, about what what is required in terms of education for sustainable development. Um, so. Again, there are some important phrases in here that talk about the sort of the idea of, you know, perhaps how education needs to be different, needs to change, needs to transform in order to, to meet these aspirations. So it's about empowering learners um, to take informed decisions and responsible actions. So there's this idea of uh, agency there in terms of what, what learners are being encouraged to um, encouraged to do um, and again this idea of different pillars environmental economic and social present and future so again going back to those kind of tenets from from Brundtland uh, but also the importance of cultural diversity as well which I think culture is sometimes seen as the um, the fourth pillar of sustainability uh, you'll see it in some definitions but they say cultural diversity so that recognizing that people will have different um, different perspectives and ideas about this. Uh, and again, that perhaps um, links back to some of the sort of earlier criticisms of sustainable development and perhaps promoting a rather kind of westernized view of what that might, might mean. It's about lifelong learning. So again, it's about, you know, not just a bit of content in the now, but again, setting up ways of studying, learning that will kind of carry uh, carry on throughout the life course. Uh, and so this is very much part of this, this goal of quality education. Um, holistic, so it's about thinking about these bigger issues in, in, the, in, the, in the whole and how things are linked together. And it's transformational. So again, this idea, it's kind of you know it's making making a difference and make people making a change um, so again a call to action transformation addresses learning content what is taught um, outcomes pedagogy the way things are taught and the learning environment itself um, and I say it achieves its purpose by transforming societies so quite some some big and powerful asks in there in terms of what what education uh, is is looking uh, education for sustainable development is seeking seeking to do so it raises some very uh, interesting questions for the the way we go about uh, learning and teaching in further and higher education uh, uh, say how, how we engage with this so this has been very much as I say um, at the forefront of the the global discussions from UNESCO uh, and this is um, filtered through into some recent updated guidance in the context of the UK. Um, recently uh, published some guidance from Education for Sustainable Development by um, Advance HE, which um, kind of are 
linked to um, the idea of learning and teaching quality uh, and action, action activity within the UK and the Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education that oversees all of the quality standards and frameworks for further and higher education. So I was saying that was again recently recently launched. So from that document, again, they set out again sort of what they working on this UN um, definition, what education for sustainable development uh, should be should be about. And again, very much reflects that that UNESCO definition. Um, so it's about knowledge, but I think it's also so it's not just about learning about sustainable development. It's also I say this is the idea of four uh, key word there. I say it's about also competencies. So again, having skills, competencies that go along with knowledge um, to pursue sustainable divisions, uh, visions for the future. So again, that idea of action um, and getting involved. This idea of complexity uh, is also important. So again, all these different elements linking together as in the, as I say, the sustainable development goals and the different pillars of sustainability. And the idea that these are what are called uh, wicked problems. So again, you may have come across this, this term, um, but they are, you know, problems that are, are not easily solved or have immediate solutions. They are quite complex. So uh, how we tackle climate change is not a, not a simple uh, problem that can be addressed from, from one perspective and again it's often about think about different different disciplinary perspectives that can be applied to these so-called uh, wicked wicked problems and these are not fixed new issues will constantly emerge so again the idea that the world is is changing and things change rapidly and again how we can um, engage with and and uh, address address that as well Again, emphasising that idea about personally and professionally getting involved. So getting engaged and then how in going on, perhaps in terms of different professions, how people can continue to contribute to that positive change. So lifelong learning. And also, as I say, partnership is a kind of thread running through the uh, the, the goals, the global goals as well. So this idea of uh, different groups working together and again, in terms of the sort of transformative pedagogies that underpin some of these ideas, again, students and staff working together um, uh, in a way, um, say, to co-design solutions and, and drive change. So very much, as I say, active idea of learning rather than the kind of passive uh, style of, of learning in that respect. Uh, and this, as I say, um, feeds into this idea of competences. So this is the idea of um, education for sustainability, not just about sustainability. So yes, knowledge is important, but it's also the approaches, uh, the competences, ways of doing things that are uh, important. And again, certainly very much where um, education needs to, to think about how it can, can transform um, sort of how both staff and students relate to sustainable development. Um, so questioning the ways of thinking, I say practicing and being, so ways of thinking, so critical thinking, well, you know, you'd hope that that would be part of the educational experience to think critically um, about um, I can say one's own position, what's going on, uh, not taking things for granted the way they are. Uh, anticipatory thinking, um, so again this idea of future orientation, thinking about different scenarios, different things in the future. And this idea of systems thinking, things being kind of linked together and the idea of sort of social environmental um, economic systems and the linkages there. Strategic, um, so again, people think about, let's say, pathways to, uh, let's say, a sustainable futures, how people can get involved. Collaboration, as I say, it's very much the idea of partnership and collaboration is seen as key to education for sustainable development. 
problem solving so yes there are all these problems that need to be addressed that need to be thought through uh, again that's perhaps a longer standing uh, role within education but certainly that's seen as very much at the heart of um, education for sustainability and then also ways of being sort of thinking about yourself so again um, really being self-aware of who you are your role in all of this uh, ways in which you can engage and questioning your own kind of norms and values. And I think that hints at that kind of cultural context. Um, so again, the different different viewpoints and again, be able to see that, but also say reflect back on your own norms and ideas as well. So these are the seven kind of core competencies that the say UNESCO have find that are important for education, for sustainability that should be promoted in kind of this idea of a transformational learning experience kind of big big words in the the recent guidance there um and they argue yes this can be unsettling again sort of in terms of questioning lots of things um, but it will be i say this this start of this 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 journey um in terms of moving from toward let's say a role in a sustainable uh, future so raises some interesting and again the guidance is very has lots of ideas about getting started uh, in terms of you know how to um, go on this journey of transforming learning to support education uh, for sustainable sustainable development so um this i say this guidance has kind of recently i say been refreshed and come out but i say it's something that certainly uh, at the University of Worcester we've been uh, thinking about and engaging with for a, for a while now uh, and there are a range of sort of ideas uh, sort of models out there but certainly this idea of transformation you know cuts across um, all levels and all aspects of um, I say higher education and what we might term here the university culture so uh, we're not just dropping in the odd mention of the sustainable development goals into into our curriculum that's one element of it but it's much more than that uh, say this idea of kind of transforming the whole university culture and, and how that can help support um i say the the kind of wider transformation of societies um, for this more sustainable future so at worcester we kind of think about um model that's been around this idea of a four c's model um, Stephen Sterling, who's again another a UK based um, professor who's as I say, been a long time um, advocate for these ideas of education for sustainable development. Um, and he talks about, let's say, the importance of all these aspects of, um, let's say, higher education experience of culture being important. Um, the curriculum is obviously important, but equally work across the campus and also with our uh, external community as well again in terms of lots of the transformation so this very much sits at the heart of kind of how we've approached this idea of transformation and again these these things can happen in all sorts of ways it can um, like I say be very much formal part of I say the learning and teaching experience um, but also you mustn't forget uh, the sort of informal aspects so again a lot of our students engaged in volunteering activities uh, which will form part of what's called the informal curriculum and also the the wider university environment or I call the subliminal curriculum what you see around the campus as well so that's why it's linked into this idea of uh, say these these th uh, three elements of curriculum campus and community and how that um, I say embraces a wider idea of the university culture and it can be very structured uh, in terms of programs that are put in place um, or it can be more more organic uh, in terms of ideas uh, say that kind of uh, pop up um, and not in a sort of more unstructured way so i mean the, all these things are uh, things that um, we've engaged with in trying to as i say address these issues of education for sustainability across across uh, worcester and the university I just want to say go through a few examples then of, of some of the things in terms of um, 
ways in which this kind of can can happen or can take place within the sort of the context of um, I say higher education at the university some of the work uh, that we've been we've been engaged in um, one of the things um, I say that we've done a lot of is again obviously it's important to look at the ways in which we we know we are addressing or not the sustainable development goals and you'll see a lot of um, further and higher education uh, institutions that are now doing this kind of map mapping exercise um, to look at as I say the extent to which um, there is teaching about the sustainable development goals within within the curriculum so we've done a bit of mapping uh, at Worcester um, as you'll see that's one of the biggest uh, ones there in terms of when we looked at all our modules did they have mention of things aligned to the sustainable development goals the SD3 relates to health and we know we have a, a lot of um, or health provision uh, at the at the university uh, obviously flagged up but similarly also um, issues around um, environment as well so we've done a little bit of work about mapping and that's very good I think for raising the visibility of this issue uh, within the within the curriculum but I say that's I say just perhaps one way of doing things um, I say a lot of some of our projects are say trying to link these these areas of campus curriculum and community and again trying to touch on some of these developing these competencies uh, that are seen as so so important so the idea of kind of live projects that link to some of our activities around promoting sustainable lifestyles. So we have a, uh, a bike share scheme at Worcester and we've had um, that for a long, a long time now. Uh, and that's formed very much some links to lots of work that students have done in relation to um, supporting and developing the bike share initiatives and also out to businesses in the community and we've had different groups of students work on on projects so the idea again is idea of wicked problems and issues where different disciplines can contribute to uh, understanding and again cooperating and sharing so we've had graphic design students working alongside environmental and ge geography students uh, to address these address these issues um, and again promoting ideas about as say sustainable uh, sustainable transport so as I say action cooperation some examples of these these different um, these different competencies another way in which we've linked it um, so every year we have uh, what's called a go green week um, on on campus um, the the images here uh, come from various Go Green Weeks. Our Go Green Week this year was was virtual, which was an interesting one. Um, again, lots of activities because people weren't necessarily on campus uh, that they could do in the virtual context. But when people are on campus, um, again, the images on the right there show the kinds of activities. And we've had local schools come in, people showcasing different activities, and each. And the the whole week is organised by by students on one of our I say introductory sustainability modules, and they organise a range of themed activities throughout the week. The program at the bottom there from a couple of years ago, um, again showcasing different aspects of sustainability. And it forms part of their assessment, so again it links back into uh, the curriculum and say teaching this say important kind of skills. So. Hopefully you can see the way in which these types of activities try and, let's say, build these ideas of, let's say, different competencies around education for sustainability and link these areas of campus curriculum and community um, in terms of examples of practice. Final example, um, some of the things I say that we've done at Worcester. Um, so we have a, a sort of uh, an online sort of magazine. Uh, it has a public-facing output called Suss Things Out, where a lot of our activities are um, showcased um, in terms of sustainability at the university. 
but equally also it, it is part of the, the teaching on sustainability module as well. So it's part of some of our, our learning and teaching practice as well. Again, trying to link these link these things together. And again, people being students being proactive uh, in commenting, discussing and developing ideas around sustainability linked to both their learning and their kind of wider, wider activity as well. So that was just a few uh, examples of um, um, some activities. I was going to finish off, and I'm conscious that that time is is moving on. Um, I might be perhaps permitted um, a little bit of leeway for a couple of minutes to um, talk about some green nudges, green nudges, and show a little clip of video uh, if, if that will work. Great, thank you. Um, so again, this has been a, a recent uh, initiative through the UN. Um, so the idea is, yes, we can um, enhance what we teach in our curriculum. We can try and link these elements together, but also again, this idea of important uh, personal actions and the idea of small actions can make make a difference. And this is the idea of of nudges, uh, and again, how you can change things. I just want to show a little clip from a a longer um, CNN report, um, mainly because Worcester gets a little, little mention, well, not even a mention really, but a clip at the end uh, as part of this idea of, of green nudges. I'll stop sharing that for a second. Hopefully this will work and not crash everybody's computer. Plastic Bank's financial incentives are definitely one way to prompt personal action. But since we can't pay people to do everything, what options are left? After all, a sustainable research consultancy surveyed a thousand people in 27 countries last year and found that many wanted to make big changes in three areas. So, why might only half actually act on those intentions? We humans are absent-minded, tend to be a little overweight, we procrastinate, and are notoriously overconfident. Ouch, that's a bit harsh. But this is economist Richard Thaler accepting the Nobel Prize for theories on personal behavior. So, let's fast forward and hear him out. Crucially, once we acknowledge that humans are fallible creatures, we can ask how to help them make better decisions. Richard called these better decisions nudges, slight tweaks to our options that promote positive choices without being too pushy. Redesigning a cafeteria, let's say, to make fruit and vegetables more prominent can prompt diners towards healthier meals, but not force them. Just these simple things, they're simple, they're they're cost effective and uh, they lead people in the right direction. That's why the United Nations Environment Program didn't just publish 40 sustainable nudges, but disperse them to universities, places where this small book might have the biggest impact. There's 250 million higher education students globally. So one of the reasons why the little book of green nudges is so powerful is that it connects with students at a time when many of them are drastically changing their habits. Before publishing last year, the UN worked with behavioral specialists and studied 46 campuses with nudges already in place, like the Kedge Business School in Marseille. We started implementing our first nudges about five years ago. What we learned is that a little nudging takes people a long way. Kedge started small, with little signs and brighter recycling bins. But soon, they looked towards an even tinier source of problems. One secret bug pollutes about 500 liters of water every year. There were regular ashtrays, but people would still stomp out their secret butts on the floor. So they gave the ashtrays a makeover. They're brightly yellow, so you can't miss them. And position them better. In strategic areas where people go for smoking. But most importantly, they started asking questions. People drop uh, their secret in the, the area that corresponds to uh, their answer. Making it fun has really made a difference. Really? We collect every year 200,000 secret butts, both on our Marseille campus and our Bordeaux campus. 
those parts get properly recycled and that allows us to preserve the equivalent of 40 Olympic size swimming pools in fresh water. The school also increased composting when campus was fully open pre-COVID by nudging students to separate their cafeteria waste. Anya says this simple switch created 1.8 metric tons of compost a year, which went directly back into the gardens. Sometimes it's difficult for people to play their active role because it's inconvenient or it's not at the right time, it's not at the right place. So more it's fun and more it's easy to act sustainably, people will act. Right now, nearly 120 universities across the world are piloting the UN's green nudges. And if these students personally pick up sustainable habits, imagine the impacts that could have on the places they go on to work. So, Blinken, you might have missed Worcester on the end end of that global report, but it, it was there. Um, let's get back to our slides. So, um, so yes, I think there are many ways in which uh, we can address these these issues of education, sustainability through curriculum. Um, through, I say, the types of activities and assessment formally, but also informally, and also the idea of individual change as well. And I think the idea of uh, nudges, I think, is a really interesting one. And this idea of, as I say, they go east, making it easy, attractive, uh, social, and timely. Um, again, I said I'd, I'd take you back to to rubbish and recycling at the end. So again, this was this idea of nudges was, I say part of our recycling uh, competition, the idea of, again, this great um, phrase from our students here, again, sort of about recycling and competition and things like that, which encourage change, uh, again, been it right to be less trash, which was a kind of really, uh, really kind of interesting and, and fun, more fun way of doing, doing things. Um, and again, we've also got, um, I say, simple, some simple 10 golden rules again which again help us to as i say link link to some of these these ideas and again we've used these both with with students and also with um, some of the school children linked back to, to go green week as well so it doesn't have to be as i say a major change to um to be part of this sort of wider move of developing transformational education um just finally, I did promise one of my colleagues, Ellen Langthorne in education, that I would do a quick plug if anybody is involved in, in secondary education um, for a climate educator assembly uh, taking place on the on the 5th of June uh, on World Environment Day. Again, so if you're interested in that in the context of stakeholder and secondary education, then I would uh, heartily uh, recommend people uh, signing up for, for that event, uh, free event, uh, say to participate. Again, lots of ideas about how education can kind of um, transform um, ideas, I say, to address uh, climate and ecological emergency. So thank you very much for, for listening to me. Sorry, I've gone a little bit over my allotted time um, and I'm happy to uh, answer any questions uh, that you, you might have. And uh, there are some references at the end there if anybody is interested. Anybody have any thoughts or comments or questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, and, uh, a very good question, uh, Callie. Um, I think that's where the um, sustainable development goals can be very useful. 
um, because I think you know it does identify um, all sorts of all sorts of area. I think we've we've done a lot of um, exercises with different groups of students uh, at the University of Worcester again, perhaps whether you know certainly some of our course reps, for example. So. Um, they signed up to a workshop and we started off well you know what what do you how do you think the um, you know sustainability links to your course and we use the sustainable development goals so uh, for example early years um, student was one of them so well I, you know put, we lined people up and said how relevant do you think your course is so we had obviously all the geographers were at one end saying yeah yeah our course is really relevant to sustainability we do lots of it early years education at the other extreme saying no 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 it's nothing to do with me and then you talk about well what does this mean in terms of issues around kind of uh, quality education kind of family and and you can start that conversation i think you know with students um, that it's you know it's not just environment there are these kind of social and economic issues so it's a great publication also by um, SOS UK which I mentioned which has an A to Z of courses um, which has any course from you know um, I don't know um, arts to zoology you know that that will um, have some ideas had some great discussions I say we had graphic design um, students who've in great engaged very much with ideas around sustainable development as well as part of their course so I think you know that's that's important the idea of the nudge is important as well um, so yeah lovely good nice question Lottie about um, yeah the, the impact of the pandemic I think is an interesting one because I think everybody thought well you know the people were traveling less and that was great because that was going to change behaviours around um, perhaps more people cycling and transport. But yes, then other things around kind of, um, you know, they're not accepting cups. Hopefully those kinds of things will, will kind of come back uh, into you know, bringing your own cup and being able to kind of wash it safely um, should be should be important, I think. Um, so I think, yeah, it's. Um, some interesting research emerging about what the what the impact of the the pandemic will will mean um, and I think yes single use face masks as well but again it's about perhaps this idea of nudges and how you nudge people back in another another direction perhaps um, mm -hmm. yeah business so again Natalie yeah good um, good sort of point there um, you know, I think business have been some of the pioneers of some of this idea. They've got their own accreditation called Prime around sustainability. And I think, you know, again, this is the kind of the economics that people, uh, ec you know, economic models. I think some, some economic students, I can't remember which university was had saying, you know, you're teaching us the wrong models of economics for the future. So I think business has a really uh, important role to play. And again, some of those ideas about entrepreneurial thinking as well I think so yeah there's lots and lots of ways lots of again good examples out there um, multidisciplinary yeah I'm a great advocate multi interdisciplinary that's definitely the way forward um, yeah this is very much at the heart of kind of I say tackling these complex problems and again you get you know really interesting ideas and, and solutions developing across disciplines it's not easy and again this is the idea of it not being um you know not not an easy transition can be unsettling for people in their different disciplinary contexts but if you do try and foster that spirit of multidisciplinary collaboration then i think it, it's a much more enriched kind of approach uh, an idea um, I think it's yeah, very, very, very important because you cannot address some of these complex issues um, from one area alone. Again, you need to to draw on different ideas. Um, so, yep, yeah, again, Melanie, that's in the chat there. Yep, yeah, um, again, agreeing with Lottie. I think yes, um, it's. I think it's interesting. I think you know the pandemic has has as I say been a, a disruptive point um, for education um, and I say lots of it'd be interesting and I think you're probably in your context in Hales Owen and having so many discussions that we're having in, in Worcester as well again about what things look like I mean I interestingly I think you know again you know 
for example, in, in sustainable education at Worcester, we've been doing lots of ideas online. We were really pleased with Go Green Week that kind of worked really well and allowed us to do things differently by doing it online. So again, thinking very much about how we might move forward in a more positive way in a kind of blended context. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not automatically going to change things. I think it's been an interesting moment which has kind of made people question things and we need to carry on the dialogue as how we kind of nudge and move people people forward in a in a positive way. Any any other questions or comments from anybody? I think you're muted, Lottie. <laughs> yes challenge of technology. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you for coming along. Um, I say uh, my contact details are there if anybody does want to follow up any ideas. And again, um, I say we have a sustainability page at the university website which details a lot of the things that we're doing uh, that's on our main page about uh, Worcester and again you'll see a tab for sustainability there or we also uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well which uh, where we post post things that we're, we're doing as well uh, so thank you very much everybody um, as I say um say so do uh, do participate in the climate educator assembly if you think that was something that will be of, of, of benefit um to you Happy to stay on the line for a couple of minutes if anybody's got any questions, but I suspect people will need to go.